Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Fix It Friday. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to apologize. I know my videos have been really inconsistent recently. Uh, about a few weeks ago, our uh, upstairs neighbor in our apartment uh, actually flooded, flooded ours. So we went through a whole process of moving out, packing up, moving out, putting everything in storage and waiting for a house that uh, we're having uh, made right now. Um, it has been so hectic. Uh, I promise that we will, uh, I will be getting back into making, uh, you know, uh, videos on a consistent basis. Uh, but you'll probably have to bear with me for another month here. Um, with that said, I'm trying to get caught up and, uh, and, uh, yeah, we're just trying to do all the repairs. And unfortunately I have a ton of repairs to do, but it's so hard. Uh, it takes a lot of work to get everything up, uh, to record it and then edit it and everything. And that's just all my spare time has been gone. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get to the one today. Uh, today we have a Super Nintendo. This one's not in the best shape. This one comes to us not having any audio out. Uh, the first things we'll check is obviously the port. Uh, we'll check the customer's cables. He brought them in for us. And yeah, see what we can come up with. It could be probably the audio. Uh, I, I don't know which version this is, but it could be the audio port on it. So. Uh, with that said, let's start with testing. This shell's pretty beat up. Uh, it's got a pretty good mark there. The other thing he mentioned was that I think he was trying to get into it himself and he stripped out a couple screws, so that's going to be fun too. Sounds a little weird sitting in there. And he's correct, the video looks good. I'm not getting any audio whatsoever. I'm gonna go ahead and just clean his the port in there too. That's where I'll first start. It's most likely not the port, but it's better to start with the easiest stuff first and then work backwards to the hardest stuff. Okay. The other thing I'm gonna to try too, since this does have the RF, let's see if we're getting any audio out the RF. Set it to channel three and let me just change. There we are. Okay, and no audio out on that one either. So, yep, something internally here. Let's see how bad the strip screws are. Yep, it is completely stripped. That is. Oh, now I got it. Okay. They're not as stripped as I thought they were. I, I'm seeing them crazy stripped out because what ends up happening is a lot of people start working on their own stuff and then they don't use the right tools. Yeah, so it's got the audio board. I have a spare one. I want to see if I can toss it in and see if we can get any sound out of it. The other one I have, I believe, is busted anyways as well but at least we can test and it can tell us if it's the noise on it. The other one I believe is putting out a weird sound. So let me grab that. All right, and here's the spare one. Still not getting any audio out. Okay, so I think we can actually rule this out. Let's go ahead and clean the connector here. So 
you can actually clean right underneath this. This works the same way as the N64. Just pulls up right off of this guy. And it looks like there's just residue. I, I'm dare to say that this cap might actually be bad. And now it's not reading my <laughs> my uh, Mario Kart, so that's not good news. I know why. Jeez. That's... Alright. It's not booting because the audio board's out. So still not playing any audio out. Just a triple check. That's the old one. Here's a new one. Or I should say one that I know was working before. Just to double check. And no audio still. Now we start getting into the more serious stuff here. So after inspection, this guy, the one that I said had some stuff on it is actually pretty loose too. Looser than it normally should be. So I have a donor board. Let's go ahead and take this off and then we'll pop on a new one. And it smells like fish oil, which is a telltale sign that that capacitor has failed. Um, anybody who's ever done Game Gear cap replacements, you can smell the fish oil in the in the uh, busted up caps. So, I'll go ahead and just clean this all up. Wait for it to cool for a second. Perfect. Add a little bit of flux. We'll tin the pads and then we'll take off the other one and put it back on this one. Nice and solid. All right, so we got it soldered back in here. Not the prettiest, but it'll definitely do. Um, we're gonna go ahead and test her out. Everything's good. I did see some corrosion inside this port right here, so I went ahead and cleaned it up as well. And then I used a little, uh, I got most of the uh, the gunk off of the actual ribbon cable as well. Um, it does look a little discolored. That's just from the corrosion that it had previously, but we worked some of that off. It's just the fine copper that's showing now. So. All right, and then I'm gonna throw in his soundboard. I believe that it's fine. The only reason I'm saying that is because I know this one works but it has a weird sound issue, um, but it does work. It wasn't working completely in this one either, so I'm guessing that I'm gonna try to rule this piece out as well. 
Um, if you are getting weird sounds, then it's worth trying just swapping this piece. This is actually the soundboard itself. I just don't think the audio is getting to the soundboard. All right, and we're gonna need power, so we'll do that. His power's a little weird, so I might have to end up fixing that as well for him. I'll kind of show you in a minute. Let's go ahead and just test. You want to be pretty gentle because the board's just sitting like this. You don't want to push too hard on it because it will cause stuff to uh, bust if it, if it doesn't, uh, if you put too much pressure on it. So, all right, power up here. And we got audio is back. All right, and it sounds good, so no audio issues, just for fun. So that fixed it, so that was just that cap. So the way that I found that cap is just by looking at the board and then seeing the discoloration. It looked like it was leaking a little bit, so it's always good to get those things out of the way. I, have, I would have had no idea that that had anything to do with sound um, other than just seeing it and doing it. So this is the other one that I was gonna say. Let's see what audio issue it has. That's nuts. <laughs> so it is really bad. The only cool thing about it is at least I could tell. Uh, it, it's a good kind of tester thing. I haven't busted into any of these to see uh, what, what's causing that issue. My guess is it's probably a chip on it. So it's something that I probably couldn't deal with unless I get a new one anyway. So, But either way, at least we know this one's good and we're all good to go. So I'm going to pop in. No, actually, I'm just going to put it all back together. And we should be good to go there. Um, let's actually real quick before we get going, let's take a look. I'll call the customer and see if he wants to do a new one, but the port might actually be needing to go back on. Let's see. The power port. So the power port, the way that they work, uh, if you've never worked on an NES, uh, SNES, excuse me, is it's one port, port. So this whole thing comes off all together. Uh, minus the, I believe, the uh, the AV ports separate, but in order to get the whole power thing, you have to desolder this whole bracket right here, which is kind of a bummer. His is actually shown through right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's been pulled, um, but it actually still works. So we might actually leave it, and then it looks like it's still soldered on really nicely. So that's not an issue. But I have spare ones. I mean. I don't know what I charge for it, but I could pop on a new one if he really wants to. So I'll ask him, but uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and get this back together and give it one more test and we should be good to go. Cool. All right. And just as a solid to him, I actually have a really cool kit. Uh, obviously it takes time to build up these kits, uh, but it's got everything on it that I need. I don't know what that was. Um, but here's a kit that I use. Uh, I basically, any of the ones that are unfixable, I actually just desolder a lot of the stuff off the boards um, just to keep. The real cool part about these is I like to use these ones, the multi ports. These ones are really good to desolder because you can actually end up putting them into um, the top loader NESs. And not to get off too off topic here. But the NES top loaders, these ones only had AV out. And so what you can do is you can actually strip it off and then you can um, wire in a multi-port, which is really, really fun to do. Um, it's a really good mod just because from this point, uh, you can use just the standard NES, uh, the NES port to plug directly into it. 
um, instead of having to do only RF and it actually gives out really nice video and it has an S video mod in there as well. So you can get uh, the cable that does S video. So that's just a little off topic. With that said, sorry, uh, I'm gonna do them a solid. I have a few good screws that are not stripped. So we're gonna go ahead and just put those in. I'll go ahead and clean this up for him as well, but let's go ahead and just test and just make sure that everything's good to go. All right, guys, looks like we got this one up and working again. I'm going to go ahead and give it just a fresh clean off and then we should be good to go. Uh, thanks for watching another Fix It Friday. Like I said, I'm going to try to put out as many videos as I possibly can, but with crunch time, it's just been a little difficult. So if you could bear with me for a few, uh, for probably another month while I get settled into the new house, uh, then I should be back up to a regular schedule. But yeah. Cool guys, if you haven't checked out any of my other videos, give them a watch. If you like this content, give a thumbs up and subscribe and uh, we will catch you guys later. All right.